Hi everyone, I'm just about to use some coloured wood filler, so I thought I'd do a quick video on it in case any of you have a similar project that you're about to take on. Now, we've all encountered in the past those little tubes of coloured wood filler, which um, just to do little spot repairs and things, they're not very good, they're not too part, it takes ages for them to dry and they can shrink, um, the uh, finish isn't brilliant. A lot of you might not be aware that you can get quite a good range of colours in two part wood fillers as well. The reason this job's come up is that I've been routing out these um, mahogany effect wood curtain poles today to allow for a track to be inlaid into the centre of them like this. Um, I won't bore you with the details, it's part of my day job and there's an image coming up on screen now to show you the finished effect. Basically it's like um, a typical curtain pole but it doesn't have the rings over the top which is quite good where you've got to get a pole near the ceiling, um, various other reasons. So the problem is while I was routing the pole the cord on the router got snagged on my workbench and when I went to free it the router moved and this is this lovely little dink that we've got left here. So what I'm going to do is using a bit of perspex I'm going to wedge that in the pole with a bit of wood that way I can put some filler into this hole here. But I've got to match the colour of this mahogany pole I had to do a bit of repair work about six months ago so I got these wood fillers so I'm going to have a quick run through them today to show you the sort of things that are available. So I bought this one online, this is dark oak, so I'll put the details of where I got it from in the description at the end of the video and you've got that lovely dark brown colour which is not far off what I need actually for this pole. That's the colour I used last time because I hadn't actually got these, these didn't arrive in the post in time for me to do the repair. So, having a look at these, these are from Metalux, the last one was from Spray Shop. This is dark oak teak colour and I'm just going to show you how much these vary. So that's dark oak, that is dark oak and you can see the difference in the colour. Right here we've got dark mahogany, they all come with a little pot of um, activator and a little spatula. So this is dark mahogany and that is again very different from the dark oak, slightly redder colour. Last but not least I've got here black oak. Now there are a large range of colours available, um, I think Metalux have quite a large range and the big tin of dark oak wood filler you see in this video actually came from Wood Finishers Direct you see here on the screen now they've got loads of different colours. Again I'll post a link to those at the end of this video and there's a little visual coming up on screen now but that's the black oak. So I thought what I might do this evening to make this video a little bit more interesting rather than just going straight for this one which is the most obvious colour to match up with this pole I'm going to mix some of these colours together to make our own bespoke colour. So I've got my little block of wood here. I quite like the red in this dark mahogany so I'm going to stick a bit of this. I don't need much wood filler for this repair as you could see at the start of this video so I'm going to put a tiny little bit of that on there. I say tiny, it's not tiny really is it, it's quite a lot. And then I'm going to add to that a little bit of the black oak because I want a much darker colour. Right, let's get that mixed up and see what happens. I haven't put the activator in yet, I'm just trying to get the colour right. Which is quite good actually because it means you can mix the colour without worrying about the filler going hard. Right, that's not looking too bad but I want a bit more of the black. There. I think I want to put a little bit more black in. The only downside to mixing it like this 
and you very quickly end up with a much larger amount than you actually need for the job. Right, that doesn't look too bad, does it? So now I'm just going to add a little bit of activator, or hardener as I should call it I suppose. More than I need actually that is. So now using my continental filling knife, it's a great little tool this gives you a real sense of precision when you're filling things. I'm just going to squeeze some filler into that little dink in the wood that I stupidly left earlier. Really good press, make sure I could put plenty in there. Right, that's full now. I want to get this as close as it can be to the finished depth because I don't want to have to do too much sanding. I'm just going to wipe off the residue because again I don't want to damage the rest of the pole which has been lacquered in preparation for fitting. Right, the filler's gone hard. It's about five minutes after I did it. So I can now take out the little packer piece I put in. Revealing our neat little repair job. Oh, look at that shiny, I wish I could get that shiny finish on the front which is where I really need it. Look at that. I'm just going to trim off that little bit of excess filler we've got down at the bottom. Now I don't really want to sand this so what I am going to do is using a Stanley blade I'm just going to very gently scratch away, trim away at the surface So the filler that I've just added is completely flush. Right, I'm really happy with that. Now, obviously that has gone from being a lovely dark brown colour to a bit of a matte colour. So what I'm going to do now is put some of this colour on liquid scratch cover on just to bring the sheen back onto the bit of filler. Um, got it from B&Q, I think. It's a really good, it's almost like you feel like you're almost a bit of a French polisher doing this. So I'm just gonna put that onto the area that I've just filled. A little bit wider, because I can polish it off and leave that for about 20 minutes to um, sink in and do its work. So the liquid scratch cover has now gone off. I hardly see it, it's just there look. And so what I'm going to do, using a lint free cloth, which again you can pick up at DIY stores, I'm going to give that a buff now. go the repair is finished okay so it's not as good as you'd get if you were a French polisher but I'm not French polisher and um, I'm pretty pleased with that so now I can put the track in place screw it down and continue with the job so that's it everyone that was admittedly one of my slightly quirkier videos but what I'm really trying to get across in today's video is that Whilst we all know about the sort of white or pine coloured two-part wood fillers that are available on the market, 
There are other two-part wood fillers available in lots of different colours. You've just got to sort of hunt around a little bit more for them. So I'll enclose links to all the fillers that I've used in today's video in the description at the end of the video, which you can access by clicking the show more button if you're on a PC or by clicking on the little black arrow to the right of video heading if you're on a smartphone. If you're one of my subscribers, for which massive thanks, um, I've got various videos on the editing table at the moment. I'm just struggling to find the time to get them all finished. I'm upgrading my folding workbench. I'm in the middle of building a cupboard in our spare room at the moment. And I'll tell you all about my new circular saw, which has revolutionized cutting large sheets of MDF and many more applications to it as well. So stay tuned and I'll be posting those videos hopefully very soon. If you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. Thanks again and see you soon.